foretold by the Old Testament and the New Testament. We believe the Old Testament has elements of truth in it. It's not entirely true. It has ideas we don't agree with, but there are definitely teachings of Jesus Christ uh, in in a translated form or have been conveyed to us in meaning by some of the early transmitters of that knowledge. We do believe that. We don't reject it in totality. We find it very difficult to believe a man who never met Jesus, who simply saw a vision on the road to Damascus and came out with all these new ideas which Jesus never preached and his disciples never preached. In fact, some of his, some of his disciples who were direct disciples of Jesus Christ, they rejected Paul as an imposter because they didn't believe him. When he came and he said, you know what, uh, now that Jesus Christ has died for you on the cross, you don't have to follow the Jewish law. The law is dead for you. You don't have to follow it, right? It's the, it's the circumcision of the heart that matters. The heart has to be circumcised. Don't go for physical circumcision. I can see Paul's point. I can see what he's talking about. Some of the teachings of Paul are amazing. He's saying that don't be hypocrites. Don't just have an external garb of piety and don't believe within. I understand all of that. At the same time, when he came and he abolished uh, the, the Jewish law, which Jesus never did. Uh, Do you follow the law? Sorry? Do you follow the law? We follow the law of God, yes. And, and, and it's very Jewish similar. Law? No, we don't, because we believe it has been abrogated by the Quran. We would have been following, if Quran didn't come with the new law, um, actually this new law is foretold in the Bible. And quite precisely, the location is quite precise, I believe. You know, there are, there are pointers, there are, there, are in, there are indicators, so indications pointing towards Arabia. And I wonder why. Why is Arabia so important? A law will come and the man will have something to do with Arabia. And he will be possibly uh, from the descendants of Ishmael. Okay. You're Semitic people, right? I'm talking about the children of Ishmael through Kedar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's the book of Isaiah chapter 42. It talks about a Messianic figure who will come in the future, who will bring a new law, not the Jewish law, a new law. He will come as a light for the Gentiles. He will spread judgment on the earth. Okay. And he will put idol worshippers to shame. He will take people out of dungeons of darkness and bring them to light. Sounds like Jesus. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm willing to accept it. No problem. Tell me what Jesus has to do with Kedar. Same chapter says, let the villages of Kedar rejoice. Let them lift up their voices. Let them sing a new song from, top of, from the top of mountains. I, my question is, what, what has Jesus to do with Kedar? If it's Kedar? Arabia. And, and Kedar is the direct ancestor of Prophet Muhammad. I don't know anything about Kedar. Do you have, can, I, can I borrow it? It sounds... Here's the Bible. And it's your Bible. Let's open it. And let's read. And I'll ask you a question. Why would Jesus... Uh, why, wh how, how is Jesus connected to Arabia? There's no connection. 42. Isaiah 42. I'll read it very clearly. You can say all of this is Jesus. And I have no problem with that. Jesus is one of our prophets. If it's Jesus, we accept wholeheartedly. But it cannot be Jesus for a number of reasons. First of all, this talks about judgment onto truth. Okay, which is fine. Jesus brought that. Wait for his law. Okay. Jesus never brought any law. Jesus came to confirm the Jewish law. The law of the Spirit. Uh, no, we don't, we don't believe that. We don't believe. Jesus, when it says law, this actually means a way of life, a, a living standard. It is. Okay. But no, Jesus, Jesus confirmed the Mosaic law. He said, think not I've come to abolish the law. I've come to fulfill it. And even a jot, even a jot, even on a point, you cannot go out of this law. He Anyone who teaches, sorry, he fulfilled the Torah, and he didn't only fulfill the Torah by fulfilling the prophecies; he fulfilled the Torah by practicing it. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. He practiced the Torah, yeah. right? So that's why Jesus did not bring a new law. 
he confirmed the Mosaic law. But he did because he said, you know, instead of time of old, you shall love your neighbor and hate that enemy. But I tell no, you no. to love your enemy. I see. He took, these are he abrogations. Okay, these are abrogations. This, yes. But that's not a new law. law. He took the law yeah. and he elevated it expen yeah. expen exponentially. To so its higher purpose. I understand. And but the it's the schoolmaster. Do you, do, do, you know, forget, okay. about, forget about are adultery. You? Don't even think about it. Okay. Because you've already committed adultery in your heart. So, so Jesus came and he gave us... He gave us what was what, what, you what have the to law understand was this. intended to bring us what, to what the spirit of the law. I understand that, I, and also to make us understand that there's no way that in ourselves we can keep that law apart from okay. God's grace in our lives. I understand alive. all of that. You see, what we have to understand is our view on prophethood is 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 not very different to the biblical view. There is the law, which is the Torah, and there is the commentary on the law, the explanation of the law how to practice it. What Jesus said outside of the Torah, okay, is definitely law. I know I have no problem with that. But he's actually explaining explaining the Torah. He's complementing the Torah. He never abolished the Torah. That's the point I'm making. This is a new law for the Gentiles. Why? Because this person is coming as a light for the Gentiles. Now you're going to tell me, Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19, Go into the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. I know about the verse. But also, same Jesus said in chapter 15, verse 24 of the Gospel of Matthew, same Gospel. I was not sent to anyone but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, now we have two statements from Jesus apparently contradicting. He also talks about there's more outside of this than this. Of course, but he, he strictly, he said, I was not sent to anyone but to the Israelites. Yeah, the, his role was Mashiach ben Yosef and he will return as Mashiach ben David. Yes, but he never came for Gentiles. Jesus rejected the Samaritan woman. You think that God wouldn't come for all creation? I don't believe he was God. I don't believe he was God. I don't believe he was, I don't believe he was a universal prophet. He only came for the Israelites. He never preached to the Romans. Jesus never went. They a few Romans converted. They, they baptized the whole household. Jesus also said when when the woman when the woman was uh, uh, you know when she came to Jesus and Jesus said your faith has healed you, right? At that point, Jesus made it very clear that I haven't come for you. I haven't come for you. I'm not he preaching talks, to you. He talks but about if people sheep, sheep of another fold. Yes. Right? Yes. I do not throw um, to swine. I do not throw the, the he, came, he came first for the Jews and then for the Gentiles. No, it is it doesn't say that. The Bible is very clear. The Bible is very clear. Yeah, You have to go? Yeah. These guys are going. These guys are going. But anyway, before you go, the, the point I was trying to make, in verse number eleven, the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voices, the villages of Ke Kedar do it inhabit. Kedar is the second son of Ismail. This this person, this person, when you read the entire chapter, has particular qualities. And these qualities fit into the life of Muhammad more than anyone else. Geographically, geog Kedar, Kedar is Arabia, by the way. Same chapter, same chapter consistently when you read it. And Prophet Muhammad all, had all those qualities. New law, judgment on the earth, I would okay. have to look more into that. Please do, nice. please do. Um, uh, um, it's been good to speak to you. Nice talking to you guys. Just to let you and, know. And, and, and believe me, life is short. It is. Life is very short. And, um, don't, don't. The only if, way to have assurance for the salvation of our sins is through Jesus Christ. I can assure you. I, I would assure you that you're following Paul. You're not following Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. Jesus no. is the center. Paul, you are following Paul at the expense of Jesus. That's my final statement. You cannot be following Jesus and Paul at the same time. It's impossible. Well, is Jesus' you, you, credit card Paul, Paul has sold you with the label says Jesus? So, so you swipe for and pays the price. I mean, you think you are following Paul or Jesus through I Paul? Know, I know Christ through Paul. I know him. No, you have spirit. the lens. You have the lens of Paul. You're looking at Christ from a Pauline lens. Of course. If, if you if you take Paul out and read Jesus on his own, you wouldn't be. But maybe you're reading the scriptures through the lens of Muhammad. Absolutely. Which I absolutely. But but have I ever taken off the Muhammadan lens and looked at Christianity from the Christian lens? Absolutely. I've also done that. 
I've also done that. I, it's, I know it's not easy to take off your Mohammedan lens and look at Christianity as it stands today uh, through that lens or without that lens. I've done both. I've, 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 I've tried to put myself in, in a Christian's and I appreciate why a lot of Christians would end up believing in this abstract notion of love or this belief in the cross. Jesus died for our sins. We are free. Hallelujah. Sing and have and, and live a joyful life in this world. It's a very attractive idea. Idea. I, if I didn't know Islam, I would be a Christian. Because it frees me. It gives me a lot. I can go and have, uh, you know, liberty. Dine and watch. liberty and commit sins as no, well. No, 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 no. No? Not to commit sin. To so why did Jesus die then? Because we were talking about this earlier. It's liberty to follow, to choose obedience. It's not liberty I understand. To okay, good. There's a false doctrine. There's a if, false doctrine. We have a dilemma. Coming, coming to the Christian church. Yeah. yeah. Legalism tells you, you know, you believe in Jesus, you can't sin anymore, right? I understand that. License yeah. Yeah. tells you, you believe in Jesus, go sin all you want, you're forgiven. Yes. Liberty in Christ is that you are free not to sin. Good. Because through the Holy Spirit, He gives you the ability to live a holy life that you didn't have before. And it only comes when we surrender to the fact that we cannot keep His law, mm. that we cannot live the way that God wants us I, to I, live. I'll ask you a simple question. Mm. If someone who has lived a holy life, mm. someone who believes in the cross, right? And uh, someone who has received the grace, and this person ends up um, drinking wine. I mean, wine is not forbidden for Christians anyway. Uh, let's say adultery. He ends up committing adultery. Drunkenness. Drunkenness or adultery or lies or cheats. And then he wants to come back into the fold. Is that possible? If they repent. But Paul says no. The restoration. Paul says no. Once you have fallen, having received the grace. The, this is the problem. This is where you get... You no, know, no. Yeah, Paul, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Understand what you're you know saying. the verses I'm talking about? Hebrews 10, 26. It yes. says, if we go on sinning willfully, as you receive a knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for our sins, but a certain fearful looking for no, our judgment. I'm talking no, about no, a different no, part. Listen, I'm, I'm, different I'm verse. along the same lines. You mean those who are justified by the law have fallen from grace? No. Once you have received grace, yeah. and then you fall away, there is no return. That's what he's talking about. Yeah, there, there is a point. I, I believe the way that I see the scripture, there is a point where you can go too far and you can fall from grace. There's Christians no, no, that here, don't, that here, here. The point, the, what Paul is saying is, yes. if you fall from grace, now who falls from grace is the question. And how much one has to sin in order to fall from grace? That's, is it one murder, two murders, well, one adultery, two adulteries, well, 50 adulteries? So which one? It's is it not one? sustained by works. Your salvation is not sustained. I, I understand that. But if you fall from grace and there is no return for you back into grace, how much do you have to sin when you actually fall from grace? Do you have an answer to that? I believe that God is merciful. Of course, so do I. But Paul doesn't believe so. Paul is saying once you fall from grace, that's it. Um, let's read the passage. So, uh, no, we gotta go. We gotta go. Okay. I have to go. I have a, he's I have he's a going dinner. to Spain tomorrow. So. Okay. Not, nice talking not, to you. you. We'll continue what? talking. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for yeah, you. So will I. So I tell I. you. I will pray for you. I, well. I, I never experienced God until a few years ago. Okay. I finally read this word and came to the point where I was willing to understand I know nothing. And look into when, Islam. When, when look, I, look into Islam a bit more before you die. Before you die. I, 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 before you decide to die. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Because the Quran tells us, do not die until you are a Muslim. Okay. Bef what is Muslim? Muslim is not becoming an Arab and start riding camels. Okay. <laughs> being Muslim has nothing to do with that. Being Muslim is being in submission to the God of Moses, God of Jesus, and God of Muhammad. So look into. To give it a try. Just, just with an open eye. Much love to you anyway. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you guys. No Thank you. Nice talking to you. you. Thank you. This was a very, very amazing conversation. It's like I'll just, I'll rewatch this because it was an amazing conversation. All these guys were, they had good points. Very, very good points. I would like to take note of how um, Adnan said he, he had to take off the Muhammad um, I and look at Christianity from its own perspective, which is very, very good, which people don't want to do. You don't, you can't, you can't be closed minded and then try to view something else or someone's else point of view with your one minded, one mindedness. You have to be open out there to 
welcome other ideas not that you're going to support them you're just welcoming them enough to learn from them which is very very amazing and i like how these guys were listening everyone was listening to the other person and i hope the other guys also look into islam otherwise this was very very amazing and a big shout out to the person that suggested this make sure to give this video a big thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video